Hello parents and carers, it's Miss Ponsonby here and I just wanted to take you through a few slides today so you have a really good understanding about keeping your daughter safe online and I also want to make you aware of how school are monitoring what the students are doing online while they are working remotely at home. So hopefully by the end of this it will be helpful for you to understand what it is we do and also more importantly what you can do to ensure that your daughter stays safe while she is working remotely. Our students continue to access remote learning at home and we have a duty as a school to continue to safeguard them when they've logged into devices with a school email or they're accessing their Google Classroom account. And how we do this is that we monitor keywords and phrases that students input to any emails, any web searches or any documents that might cause concern for us as a school. We are using a system called Smoothwell Monitor and this is a trust wide system. What it means is that any words that are deemed as rude, offensive or inappropriate are picked up by the safeguarding team here at Chulney Girls. There is a link here and it gives you further information about the software. This system enables us to respond to anything that we are alerted to that is deemed as not safe for students. It's really important for us, particularly as we're not physically seeing our students in school. All of the safeguarding team oversee the alerts and we respond accordingly and when needed. When we're actually alerted to an event, we receive an email along with a screenshot, which will give information about the device that the screenshot's been taken from. Quite often, we call it a level three, a level four or a level five. Now a level three could be things like just the use of inappropriate language. So it might be a swear word, or it might be referring to some body parts which are, are deemed as inappropriate. Now, when it's a level three and above, you will have contact by a telephone with one of our safeguarding team. And the reason we do this is we want to speak to both parents and students about the concern that we have, and just to actually gain an understanding of what it is and the reasons why the student may have been looking at something in particular on the internet, for example. Quite recently, some examples of things that we have been alerted to, looking at videos of inappropriate things, messaging friends and really just using language which is uh, of a sexual nature or referring to body parts of a sexual nature. Chilton Learning Trust have kindly put together this poster which summarises how the monitoring works. What I must stress to you is that we cannot see what students are doing on their documents or on the internet or what they're browsing or what they're doing anything on anything else. We are merely alerted to anything deemed as inappropriate. So if students have been given a laptop from school to use during remote learning, it is really important that these devices are only being used to complete schoolwork. You may or may not be aware um, of a game that is trending and it's really popular among our young people currently, and it's something called Roblox. And it's supposed to be a global fantasy violence game and it brings people together from all around the world. Players can connect with people everywhere and they can message each other through the game. Now that can be messages that everybody in the game can see, but they can also private message. The way it works, one child has an idea about a game to play and others join her and the rules change as the group decide how they're going to have fun together. Roblox does filter and check the games being created for inappropriate images and profanity, but it actually still allows violence, murder and reference to guns and knives. The language used on this platform, from what I've seen already, is often very inappropriate. I've already mentioned that there can be group messages and private messages, and most of the time these messages are coming from people that students do not know. What I would suggest with this and the best solution is that you as parents specify the account restrictions in the linked Roblox account. So what I've done here is there's a link to our website and it gives you parental guidance on the game. And what it will do is it will ensure that your daughter is safe should she still choose to play the game. If the settings are right, the game is not as, what, as bad as what it can be if the settings are wrong. So I hope that makes sense and I hope you do take the time to have a look, particularly if you know that your daughter is playing this game. If you're happy for your daughter to play Roblox, 
the settings option on the diagram opposite will enable you to maximize security and it will stop any communication between people that do not know each other. What you need to do here is in the contact settings, you make sure that everything is turned to no one. That means that nobody will be able to message, nobody will be able to friend request, and nobody will be able to send private messages to your daughter. So it's worth having a look at what the settings currently are. If they're quite open, it means that your daughter can receive messages from absolutely anybody and they could be anywhere in the world. There are lots of things you can do to keep your daughter safe online. So here are just a few. So talk openly with your child about their online activity. Even things like you can look at their history, you can look at what they've been browsing. And that's worth doing just sort of once every every sort of week if you can afford to do that time wise. If not, then fortnightly is a good way to do it. Keep screens and devices where you can see them. Sometimes when students disappear, it's often because they're trying to perhaps hide something. Not always the case, but it can be the case. Know your parental controls um, on all sorts of social media, any platforms, any games platforms that you shoot the, the girls are using. You can actually have a look at the parental controls to make sure that they are as high as they can be and the privacy is protected. Another thing is to know who your daughter's friends are online. It's quite startling when girls in school are on Snapchat and they've got 560 friends and they may perhaps only know 60 of those, which means they accept people ad hoc, if you like. So it's worth knowing and maybe just randomly picking out and saying, well, who's this person? Are they actually girls? Are they a family friend? Are they in your community? Are they in your neighborhood, for example? But it's important that you have those discussions. And finally, teach your daughter to keep her location private. Quite often, students use their dates of birth, they use the, the month they were born, they use their road name um, as an email address, for example, and it gives people too many clues about who people are and where they are. Um, and I've also provided a link to NSPCC here, which will support you in keeping your daughter safe online as well. As you know, we are still here for our families, for our girls. And if you have any concerns or worries, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Staff are always at the end of their email and we will make sure we reply in a timely manner. Thank you very much for taking the time to go through the presentation and we hope you found it useful. Please do take a few minutes to just discuss the content of this with your child to make sure that they understand that school are actually monitoring what's happening around the inappropriate words, language, um, and playing things and searching for things that they shouldn't really be doing. Thank you very much. Take care and we hope to see you all again very soon.